Here's the image we're going to work from. I'm going to start by drawing it with my HB graphite pencil. I'm using a mechanical clutch. You guys use whatever HB pencil you feel like. Uh, the process is always the same. I'm going to really loosely sketch in my composition. Uh, usually when I'm working in landscape, one of the first things I indicate is the location of my horizon line, whether it's going to be high or low, and then just some of the basic shapes that I'm seeing. So I've got this kind of cluster of trees over here. Um, we've got some mountains back here, like this. Uh, we have another cluster of trees over here, like this. Again, I'm just kind of laying in simple angles and getting my composition down. Um, so there's not a lot of architecture in this piece other than the little village towards the background. Uh, I'm probably not going to use a ruler to do this drawing. Uh, we've done enough architecture, enough perspective. Um, now let's work a little bit more freehand and practice dealing with organic textures, trees, grass, mountains, that kind of stuff. All right, and then we have our other row of trees right about here, kind of more or less at the same spot. Um, I'm going to cut off my composition a little bit. Um, you guys decide how to crop it. Okay, so here's my composition overall. Uh, now I'm going to start putting in a little bit of detail. Um, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. You guys are going to watch. And then I'll show you guys how to ink this, this drawing. Okay, uh, I have my composition more or less penciled in. Uh, notice that I didn't go into detail, or tried to avoid it as much as possible, and was just penciling in the shapes, the general shapes of what I was seeing. Uh, the major branches, little branches, I'll figure out once I'm actually inking. Um, I did want to leave a few areas white towards the background, um, so maybe on some of the buildings towards the back, I'll indicate where I'm going to leave the white. Uh, that's maybe an important detail that is um, pretty necessary. Um, okay, so this parts of the drawing which I need to finish a little bit. Uh, I can't because the tripod is in the way of my computer screen. Uh, so I'll do that and then when we come back I'll have a more finished drawing and then we'll be ready to ink. Now that I have my drawing a little bit more penciled in, I'm going to start inking it. Uh, let's think about the overall strategy we're going to use. As a rule, when working in ink wash or watercolor, you're going to work light to dark, but most importantly, you're going to work background to foreground, big to small. So what I'm going to do first is lay in the furthest thing back, which is always going to be the sky, and then little by little, I'm going to start working in sectors. So the sky is going to be sector one. I'm going to work on that first. Then I'm going to start moving to the mountains in the distance. Then once I've got the mountains in the distance, I'm going to start working on these hills, then this row of greenery, here and here. Then I'm probably going to fill in the field, here and here, the road, the mid row of trees. And then lastly, probably I'm going to lay in the two foreground trees here. Very, very important to be systematic when you work. 
have a plan of attack because this technique is not correctable. Once you have something down, you unfortunately are not going to be able to change it. You have to think ahead. It's a little bit like a chess match. What four, five, six, seven, twenty steps do you need in order to complete this thing? You also need to anticipate where you're going to leave areas either white or really, really light. So I've indicated with these little tiny rectangles areas that I'm going to try as much as I can to leave alone, to allow the paper to glow through. Uh, there's also going to be a few patches on the leaves that are going to be a little bit lighter <clears throat> that I need to pay attention to when I'm laying in the value of the sky. Um, because if I go over it, I'm more or less not going to be able to regain my white again. It's going to be forever lost underneath the ink wash. So uh, always plan ahead, have a strategy, and then divide your image into value sectors. So I've divided it, background and foreground, into a few different places with similar values. Uh, that'll allow me to really quickly block in the general values before throwing myself into detail. So uh, the first step is to work on the sky sector. That's going to be this area here indicated in uh, the image on top. Got my palette ready to go. Uh, one of the advantages of having premixed values is that it limits the contrast automatically for you. Again, kind of like the equivalent of an HP pencil. So you're going to start off with your very, very lightest wash. <clears throat> and get the general value transition of the sky, the fact that it's a little bit darker here and goes a little bit lighter towards the bottom. Let's do that. Uh, because the sky is going to be considerably lighter than just about anything in the foreground, I don't have to worry too much about making sure that I go around my trees. Now, where you see leaves going a little bit lighter, I have to be careful. I want to leave those areas alone. I'm not going to touch them. I want to have a little bit of highlight on the leaves in the foreground. Otherwise, I'm just going to go over it because whatever values I put down in front are going to end up being darker anyway. And then a little bit lighter towards the bottom. So I'm going to dilute my wash a little bit. Again, I'm not worried about going over anything because, well, there's going to be darker value there anyway. I can always go darker. Uh, I can't go lighter, though, once it's dry, particularly. So I'm just going to keep going and cover everything more or less on top. Uh, there's places where the sky shows through on the bottom here. <clears throat> just go over it. And then a little bit lighter towards the bottom. Any place where I see the sky, I'm going to lay in a little bit of that wash. Have your paper towel handy because sometimes, let's say, oh my gosh, I've gone too dark, you can always, while the wash is still wet, go back into it and lift it up, which is particularly useful because we've got some very light valued clouds in the background. I can use my paper towel to create that effect. I can also go a little bit darker towards the top. So I notice that the sky here has a little bit more dark value. While this is wet, I can still do this. Or I can wait for it to dry and go over it with another layer. Put it down and let the water do the work. So I'm not hatching, I'm not trying to blend with my brush. That would be a mistake. It actually creates more irregular textures. <clears throat> so we see a little bit of the sky here. And then I'm just going to wash in the transition, make it a little bit softer here. Eventually we're going to see some crispy, relatively crispy highlights here. But I'm going to leave this area alone because I want to make it light. There's going to be some highlights in there. Okay, so I've got the transition of the sky for the most part. Uh, the next step is to lay in my mountains back here. Now, um, <clears throat> we need to pay attention to atmospheric perspective at this stage. So we talked about this in the last tutorial. Uh, quite often in a photograph, you're not gonna be able to see atmospheric perspective as effectively 
as you would in real life. Now I chose this image specifically because the atmospheric perspective was pretty clear. Even still, I have to be careful not to make my textures back here too dark. Um, especially here towards the back of the trees where we see really strong darks. I'm going to make sure they're a little bit lighter. Okay, um, we're going to start off with the very lightest value that I'm seeing here. <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit darker than the sky, just a little bit. And where else am I seeing it? I guess I'm seeing it a little bit peeking out here, just a touch. Okay, then I'm gonna wait for this to dry and then I'm gonna start laying in the very lightest value that I'm seeing for these slightly greener, closer hills. But I'm gonna be sure to leave these little areas of white alone. Um, <clears throat> Now, while I'm waiting for things to dry, I don't have to just sit there and twiddle my thumbs. I could be working on another area. So we can start working here to get the general value of the trees in the distance. Notice that we're dealing with a relatively dark green, so I can start off with a slightly darker value as a starting point. <clears throat> what else can I do? Well, I can also lay in the value of the road minus the shading, ma minus the flat shadow. So I'm just going to look underneath and notice that it's a little bit lighter towards the back and it gets a little bit darker this way. For a big area like that, maybe I'll switch to my half inch brush. And it starts very light, uh, probably about the same value as the lighter part of the sky. Going this way, like this. And then ending up a little tiny bit darker. Just a little tiny bit. Now, the white of the paper will always fool you. Uh, you might think, oh my gosh, I'm going too dark. This is already messed up. I need to start over. Uh, don't think that way. Uh, right now, you're comparing all of your values to the value of the really brilliant white of the paper, it's gonna throw you off a little bit at the beginning. Um, just keep in mind that right now you're comparing everything to the white of the paper, which makes everything look overly dark. Now the drawback of this is that it throws you off. Uh, it's going to trick you into making your values a little bit too light. So quite often, a value that looks like it's too light actually needs to be considerably darker and you'll only realize that once you have a bunch of values next to it. Again, values very relative. I don't know how dark one thing is until I can compare it to something else. So this might feel like it's really bright, but there's a lot of darker values around it and hopefully, hopefully, I'm not entirely sure, um, we'll be able to make this look as bright as it actually is once we start putting in the darker values around it. All right, don't put in the, sh the, the cast shadows yet. Uh, hold off on the detail. Keep filling in large blocks of value. Keep working forward, forward, and forward. Okay, uh, sadly my phone ran out of memory and we lost a little bit of footage. Uh, what did I do while the camera wasn't working? Well, I blocked in the hills in the distance here. I found the lightest value and then I tried as much as possible to leave those little bits of white alone. Now, there are other ways of retaining your whites. You can, at the end of your painting, use an exact knife to scrape out a few little highlights. Uh, you can also use something called liquid frisket, which is basically liquefied latex that you put down at the beginning of your painting that seals the paper, protects it from your wash, that when you lift off will create little bright areas of white. Both are considered somewhat cheating in the ink wash watercolor community. Um, but mainly, it just doesn't look quite as good when you scrape out when you use liquid frisket as when you very skillfully leave the whites alone. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep working forward, keep working general to specific. I'm gonna start laying in this greenery right here. I'm gonna find the brightest value and lay that in. Um, so this value is significantly darker than the value of anything 
in the hills further back. And I need to mix up a wash that more or less reflects that shift in value. It's going a lot darker. Now, one of the things that I was talking about while the camera was not working, while my phone was not on, was the fact that quite often what looks too dark at the beginning will end up being the right value at the end. Uh, white is very, very tricky to work with. It's going to make all of your values feel a little bit weak. I'm sorry, a little bit too strong at the beginning. Right? Uh, it's going to make everything feel like, oh my gosh, it's too dark. And there's a tendency to panic and at the end, make your painting very, very pale. Uh, this is a really common fault in watercolor, not going dark enough, uh, not being bold enough with your washes. Um, this takes a little bit of anticipation, a little bit of practice. Uh, over time, you'll learn how to estimate the fact that you're comparing everything to the white of the paper, and you're going to compensate for that fact. You're going to automatically start making things dark enough, even if they sort of feel too dark at the beginning. Okay, so we've got touches of that same kind of green here. Okay, um, let's wait for this to dry, and in the meantime, start putting in, start putting in, start blocking in some of the trees back here. Um, they're probably about the same distance away, this and the stuff back here, so I'm going to make a similar value going this way. Again, this represents the very lightest values that I'm seeing back there. I'm putting in a little bit of texture, indicating some kind of leafy texture back here. Don't make it too strong. Those trees are really, really far away. And then little by little, I'm going to start filling in the other trees with the same light value. I'm not going to get a value transition from light to dark. Uh, I'm going to keep it more or less the same because the lighter values do not change depending on how far away an object is. The darker ones do. Darker values definitely decrease as things go back in space. Lighter values can be equally bright. Uh, let me switch to a larger brush. That'll be a little bit easier to do. <clears throat> And let me just plop in, let me wash in just the basic shape, the basic outline of my tree back here. I am following my underdrawing, uh, but really I'm just kind of getting the general shape of the tree. I'm improvising a touch here and there. I'm just making sure that the shape is irregular not block-like. Okay, we've got some bushes here going this way. And then I'm going to stop at this tree, which requires a different value for its blocking. Okay, uh, so now that this edge is dry, I can start going in and getting the general value of the field. I notice that it's a little bit lighter towards the back, just a touch. And then it gets a little bit darker towards the foreground where you've got this row of dry hay, whatever that is. You can also lay in some of the value of the fields on this side, which I forgot to do. And I noticed that the value gets a little bit lighter this way as it goes back. OK, 
Again, once a corner is there, it's there. But we're going to have lots of texture there. We're going to have a lot of stuff happening here. So I'm not really worried that there's a little bit of irregularity. Um, okay, so now that I've got my background more or less filled in, I can start working more towards the middle ground and foreground. Um, let's do that. <laughs> 